Hey everyone and welcome to the Hydra in a Box Sprint 9 demonstration. Today we're going to show three things to you showing what we've been working on this week. First we're going to have Justin Coyne show off some work in Hydra in a Box on IIIF manifests, uh, in particular supporting the IIIF presentation API which is coming along great. Then we're going to have Chris show the new Hydra in a Box account creation workflow in the splash page. So this is for creating a tenant within the multi-tenant application. And then we're going to have Aaron Fahey show off our AWS-based deployment architecture, and she'll walk through that for you. So thanks all for joining. And up first is going to be Justin Coyne. Hello, everybody. Um, this is a, a, a picture we uploaded a couple weeks ago. It's a picture of a rhinoceros, and we have a link here to open it up in our IIIF image server. And it looks like this. And this is using the IIIF image API. But there's another part of the IIIF spec, which is the presentation API. And this can be used to present uh, things that have you know, more than one image. But for right now, we're just trying to present something that has a single image. And the way we do that right now is just by typing manifest.json. And what it's going to do is produce a bunch of JSON. And when we have it integrated with Universal Viewer, that will allow like universalviewer.io to pull our objects from Hydra in a box, display them in Universal Viewer or anywhere else on the web in the order and with the annotations and metadata that we have specified. Um, we've worked on creating a gem in Project Hydra Labs called IIIF Manifest that allows any PCDM object to produce one of these IIIF manifests and that's what we're using in Hydra in a box. Okay. Take it away, Aaron. Uh, up next is, thank you, Justin. Um, we're going to go to Chris next, but I appreciate your enthusiasm. <laughs> All right, Chris, you're next. Okay, um, so in the last couple of weeks, we've been working on stabilizing our uh, AWS stack for deploying Hydra in a box to the cloud, um, including some high availability services and our multi-tenant architecture. Uh, to start demonstrating the power of this, we uh, built out a very simplified new account workflow. Um, in future sprints, we'll work on design the user experience around this and streamline it um, into a very nice workflow for people to sign up um, for new accounts. Um, but for now, we, we have this lovely splash page um, with a nice big button to sign up uh, for a new account. And right now, all you have to do is give it um, a name. Um, we will call it Sprint Demo. Uh, and seconds later, um, we will be prompted to create our initial user account, um, which will get administrative privileges to our new Sprint Demo um, tenant within Hydra in a Box. Uh, and then we have a Sophia instance where we can do and ma manage all of the things uh, Sophia traditionally offers, um, including kind of administrative settings, uh, the uh, dashboards, um, creating new works, creating new collections um, within the tenant's own workspace um, backed by all of our Amazon infrastructure. So over to Aaron. Thank you, Chris. Okay, so um, to talk through the auto deploy structure that we have um, going between uh, three big services, one being GitHub, the second being Travis for running our tests and then doing a deploy to uh, AWS. And then within AWS, there's a bunch of other tools. Um, but here's a good diagram to show way that we're leveraging the connection between GitHub sort managing our source code, uh, allowing Travis to run those those builds for us, and then and then letting AWS kind of kick off. So walking through this diagram, 
Um, I've, I've talked in previous demos about our, our AWS repo where we're holding all of our CloudFormation templates. Um, and that where we are uh, also using a Travis build to deploy the templates themselves to S3, which then we kick off through the Amazon CLI to build those cloud formations, to build the stack. And that includes um, the web app, Solar Cloud, Postgres, Fedora, Zookeeper, and Redis. And we'll include another workers tier um, to the web application in the future. Uh, otherwise, <clears throat> in our in our work, when we're building new features in the high box, um, the workflow system as we've as we've designed it is a pull request model. So a change comes through, gets uh, code reviewed, and merged into master, which is then kicking off the Travis build. Once tests have all successfully passed, Travis wraps up that source code, deploys it to a bucket in S3 that the um, cloud formation knows about and is tracking. And cloud formation then manages this resource called code pipeline, which is um, tracking that S3 bucket. Once it senses a change to that file, uh, code pipeline then um, Kicks, a, kicks off a, a deploy to the Elastic Beanstalk um, portion of the web app. So therefore, we have within, I would say, seven to 10 minutes, a working deploy after a pull request has been merged. Um, the system has worked quite well for us, and uh, there's, there's only been a few hiccups, um, I feel like, most of that has been on the AWS side, and, and um, uh, we've been uh, treating each of those and being able to, to find the root cause of it and ironing out all the bugs. Um, yeah, so quite happy with this setup. All right, thank you, Aaron. It's been it's been wonderful to be able to exploit a um, continuous deployment model. It's been good, great to push code and just see it deploying uh, to AWS so quickly and thoroughly. Um, we're also gonna be talking a bit about, a uh, bit more about our architecture next week. We've already got some demonstrations planned for then. Uh, that will be our final demo for this work cycle going from March to June. And then uh, a bunch of us will be traveling to Dublin, Ireland for open repositories. And then I would anticipate demos starting back up soon after that. So in the meantime, uh, stay tuned. We'll have another demo for you next week. And thanks for tuning in.